Great. Well, Mitchell Asset News, my name is Rob. And today, the story really is, is there is a recession coming. I think we can all feel it. We can all see it. But the real question is, should we embrace it? And I got to tell you, I think this is a grand opportunity. So we're just going to go over just why I think this is and just take a look at some past data just to see how well we could actually make out. So let's just jump right in, shall we? So the first thing I want to talk about is take a look at uh, recession factors to actually look at banks, housing, and Fed quantitative tightening. So if we take a look real quick, uh, there's been some rumblings about some banks uh, collapsing perhaps, but these are all rumors. We don't really know. But I got to tell you, some things do concern me when I see stuff like this, where the CEO comes out and says, hey, 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 don't, don't worry, everything's fine. Credit Suisse has strong capital base and liquidity. And this is from the CEO, Ulrich Corner, And he says, look, I know it's not easy to remain focused amid the many stories you've read in the media, in particular, given the many factually inaccurate statements being made. But uh, you have to trust us that uh, our day-to-day -day stock price performance is a lot different than our strong capital base and liquidity position of the bank. And I got to tell you, when I see these things, it just makes me nervous. I'm like, uh, usually when people come out and say, no, 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 it's okay. There's no problems. We're not insolvent. There's no issues that's when things are, are really going downhill. And I think we can see that in our, in our crypto market itself, such as the banks. And you can see numerous stories going on about these. Also, the housing market. There's two, two things that really will lead us in and take us out of a recession. Usually it's the housing market and, and the automotive industry. And this was an article just came out two days ago. Housing market crash could be worse than 2008. And uh, talks about a different host of new data that, that comes out. One of those is that, of course, the interest rates are over 6%. Thank you, Jerome Powell. Uh, this is has, it has to happen. I'm not blaming Jerome Powell from the Fed. I'm just saying this is what it is. July, July home sales uh, fell nearly 20%. And it looks like uh, rent prices are up 30%. So you got homes crashing, rent pricing going up because people got to live somewhere. Then in July, uh, the U.S. recorded a 10 month supply of new houses. That's the highest level since 2009. So more homes are being built than there are people to actually buy them. And then take, takes a look at the price to income ratios on homes. Uh, a new median in income price is 438,000 for a house. Average hourly earnings is 2732. It's pretty good. It puts the PI ratio at 16,035. And in, in context, this is the highest figure since the Great Recession when it was 14,923. So let that sink in. And then also, don't forget, I mean, the Fed's going to raise prices because they did so much. Of, I mean, they've kind of led us into what this is. But then you've got uh, the quantitative easing, which, of course, I'm just printing money. Now they're like, we want that money back. Quantitative tightening. Essentially, their balance sheet is too fat. And this is from Wall Street Silver. Fed has in the last six months managed to reduce its balance sheet from uh, $8.96 trillion to $8.8 trillion. Wow, that's 2%. 2%. This is all the different uh, prices that they've bought up, all these different uh, ETFs that they've bought up, and they put on their balance sheet. And Fed now plans to accelerate quantitative tightening, tightening just as the markets are getting extremely illiquid. So, look, we know these things are happening. We know it's coming, and we need to really embrace it because we have to accept the things that we can't change and just kind of go into this and go, okay, what do I do? So this really comes down to this. Recession, I think, is going to be good. And just hear me out. And the obstacle really is the way. So this is from Alf. Uh, he's got uh, his own macro uh, compass newsletter, pretty good data. He says, 100 years of history shows that recessions were always able to bring inflation down to less than 2%. Coincidentally, that's what the Fed is going for, 2% or lower. If you hit demand bad enough, you'll get there. How long does it take to slow CPI from 6 to 10%, which... Uh, for reference right now, we're around 8.3 as far as CPI numbers to 2%. Using 1948, 69, 90, 2008 as examples, it takes anywhere between 5 and 30 months. It's about a bit amount of time. And we can take a look here. This guy's done all, our, all the hard heavy lifting for us, so give him a follow. Link's in the description. Uh, does inflation come down with a recession? Yeah, it does because everything gets hit hard. So whatever you, whatever people determine is a recession, two consecutive quarters of GDP uh, reduction, or if there's a uh, un unemployment rate as it starts to fall, even though we haven't done so much right now, you can see that in 1923, 
the number of months for CPI to slow to 2%, it took six months, but the peak CPI was only 3.6. In 1926, the CPI number was 4.7. Rem remember, we were at 9.1 not too long ago. Now we're at 8.3. took seven months to come down. 1937, the peak CPI ahead of recession was 5.1. took nine months. 1948, took 10 months. 1957, you're looking at 16, or excuse me, 11 months, then 16 months at 3.7. Then this, this really awful period of 1969 to 1981, you had uh, all the the economic factors that were just just pounding us. This is when Volcker came in around 1978, 1979, kind of pushed things out so we didn't hit a depression. But in 1969, uh, you had a peak CPI of 6.2. Again, a lot of a lot of factors that were pretty negative. It took 30 months to slow down to 2%. 1974, it was 12.3. 12.3 CPI. It took 24 months. 1981, 14.8. It took 41 months. So I know people are complaining about Jerome Powell and raising rates and uh, how awful it is. I'm telling you, if he doesn't do these things and sticks to the sticks to what we're supposed to, to do to get this uh, inflation back down, we're going to see stuff like this. So I'm all for it. The 1990 and so on and so forth. So again, to put this into perspective, uh, CPI numbers in June 2021, 2021 we were at 5.4 and then just kind of progressively went up. Seven five seven nine eight five eight three eight six nine one eight five. Now we're down to eight three. Who knows what it'll be? And as a reminder, those numbers come out on October thirteenth, along with earnings report. As far as the season calendar, that's on October fifteenth for all the big stock market plays. We'll see where it's coming from. I don't expect that to be very strong. But the thing you have to remember is this: recessions don't last forever. Bull runs don't last forever. Bear runs don't last forever. But it propels us. The recession really is the way to get to economic growth. You have to cool down. And just like we talked about, 1969, that, you know, those, those, uh, those bad times, 70, 71. Then Volcker stepped in around 78, 79. Then, of course, you had all this time period. There's a little bit of economic boom. But after that, when it was really bad, from 1982 to 1990 almost, you had a nice uh, economic recovery and boom. Then of course you had a little bit of crash and all this time here. Then in 2000, the dot-com crash didn't last too long for the recession. We're like in less than a month or less than a year. Economic boom. Then of course we had Lehman Brothers and world uh, economy collapse, especially the housing market. And that lasted about two years. But then look at this, we had 13 years from 2009 all the way up to, I, I don't know, this is kind of like a, not a fake recession, but mostly because of a black swan event, corona and whatnot, but 13 years. Then before this, you had like, uh, what is it, eight years? Before this, you had 10 years. So when people talk about recession, how bad it is, I don't think it's that awful. I honestly do think that and it's a great quote from Marcus Aurelius, where the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. And really, recession, in my personal opinion, is the way to get to these big economic booms. But we have to go to that hard pieces. And this is what I'm talking about right here. There was a video we did yesterday, and we talked about Joe Biden. And every time I talk about Joe politics. It's not that I'm talking about, about the politics, the person in office. I'm talking about the laws that are being passed. And he's talking about raising the capital gains tax to a combined rate of 48.4%. And it's, it's above a million. Yeah. But for, remember, right now in the States, any capital gains tax is right now sitting around for long term, around 21, 22%, depending. And then, of course, what state you're in. And then short term is uh, based on your, your average or your yearly income. So then above 1 million, they're looking to just say, no, nope, it doesn't matter if it's long or short term, it's 48.4%. But the big, the big thing I got was, Rob, who makes a million dollars? I don't make a million dollars up to this point. So I'm okay. I'm okay with paying those taxes, which that's fine. It is. It's true. But I just want to show you something why I talk about this obstacle is the way. There's a great website. It's called dcacc.com. I linked that in the description as well. You can find it. And you can put in any crypto that you want here for the coin. There's another one called dcabtc.com. 
But this one, you can use anyone. You can use Ethereum or USD, not BNB, BNB, XRP, all the way, I think, down to like number 100. With Mina Protocol and Trust Wallet. I didn't know they had one. Good for them. So I'm just going to show you something real quick. So Bitcoin, because these things actually do add up. It's just time in the market. If you went from January 1st, 2020 to, that's not right. What's the day? We'll just say the 30th, even though I think it's the second today. Isn't the second today? Ah, there we go. Okay, we'll calculate this. If you put in $100 weekly, which is a good amount of money, and you're looking at for a good amount of time, if you'd have sold the top, which is very tough to do, you would have put in your investment. Let me blow this up. Your investment itself was $9,800, but your balance would be $42,000, which is not bad, but it's pretty far off from being a millionaire, right? Well, watch this. Let's just change this because Bitcoin is probably the safest bet in the most volatile market that we possibly have. And again, this is not investment advice. It's the things that I have done or I'm doing right now. So if I want to, let's just take Ethereum. I'm curious. If I put Ethereum at $100 weekly, and I started in 20, and this is just 2020. I'm not going to go back to 2015 when it was like nothing, what I'm saying. But if we calculate that, how much would it be? All right. So if we would have sold the top, you would have invested 10000 to get 100000 which is pretty good. Because if you're looking at the S&P 500, I mean, basically your returns are around 8.2, 8.3%, I think, year-over-year year growth. Correct me in the comments section. So, I mean, 8.3, and now we're going to see a reduction, probably 6%. In all honesty, if you get 6%, why don't you just put in T-bills? I mean, I mean T-bills are around 3.93, almost 4% for the 2 and the 10. I'm just saying. Uh, so a hundred thousand. So that's still not a million dollars, Rob. That's true. It's not. But now if we get maybe a little bit more riskier and I say, you know what, let me just take a little Cardano. Let's, let's just do 2020 again. We'll calculate this over time. And if we sold at the top, which is very tough, I might add. There we go. 235000 but you've invested $8,800. It's not bad. Now let's do something else. Let's do it a little bit riskier. Which would be, let's take uh, James's favorite. <laughs> let's take Solana. Again, back to 2020. Let's calculate this one. And again, we look over here. Uh, in that time, if you had invested 8,300 bucks, you would have had 859,307. Now, again, this is a lot of different factors. Selling at the top, which is almost impossible. I know some people say they do it all the time, but I think they're liars. Um, but if you hit 80% of that, I mean, now you're getting to that, that range that we just talked about, you know, a millionaire. And uh, these are the things that, that I look at. Now, if we're talking about all these things and we're saying, well, you know, uh, as far as capital gains and things like that. I know it's a, it, it's, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow. The thing I'm trying to get at is this. It's very tough to make a ton of money in a bull market because if you go up 10, 20%, I mean, that's great. That's nice. But do you see where all the money's made? It's when there's like nothing going on. It's super boring. Nobody wants to invest and they just get out. But I think that's the wrong time. I think the time for me personally is that I want to get in when everything's going down and everybody's scared and they're panicking. And I'm not saying to put $100 weekly. I'm just saying if you, would have, if you could have put 10 bucks weekly or 20 bucks weekly, you've been a lot, a lot farther ahead over time than putting it into a savings account and watching it inflate, inflate away. So for me, I look at these times and I'm like, you know what? I welcome these times. I'm hoping for these times. And this leads me to my last point, which is I think the four-year cycle, I'm hoping it still goes into play, but it might not. Again, the first cycle, 2012, 2015, we had a Bitcoin halving and an all-time high dip reset. 2016, halving, all-time high dip reset. We did it again, 2020, 2021, halving all-time high. Now we're in this dip and a reset. And yes, I know this is the exact same chart over here from 2018. But guess what? I don't have the data for 2022 and the whole year. And yeah, I also don't have the data for 2023 yet. And I sure as heck don't have the data for the next 
five or four years. And uh, I'm hoping it uh, plays out again. Now, could this be wrong? Could we actually have an all-time high in 2024? Maybe 2027? Pro probably. Or maybe. Who knows? I don't have a crystal ball. But I just say that, again, time in the market is a little bit more important than timing the market. But at some point, you want to stick to the rules, which are very simple below me. And that is, it's all gone. Meaning, don't invest more than you can afford to lose. Everything's a scam until proven otherwise or 100% scams. Don't leave anything on exchanges. Don't use leverage and take profits along the way. I mean, you worked hard enough in the stress, take a little profit. So that will lead me to my last, last point, which is this. This is just a little public service announcement. This was an article from Bloomberg. It says, Coinbase says it's fixing an issue that prevents the company from interacting with U.S. bank accounts. I have had zero problems with Coinbase. I just use it today. No problems with the banks. I don't know if this is a FUD article. I, don't, it, I could care less. I couldn't care less. But it just reminds me to remind you of the third rule, don't leave anything on exchanges. I think we've all learned that rule from the Voyager Celsius debacle moving forward. That's all I want to say, and that's it. So just things to think about. I know right now it seems awful. You know, we, see, we hear these, these awful stories about the recessions coming and, and the banks are failing and, and so on and so forth. I tell you again, these are huge opportunities. It's not a very popular opinion that I have. I mean, people want to hear the everything's going to blow up tomorrow, but it's just not going to happen in my personal opinion. And that's it. So look, that takes care of today's news. If you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. Now, if you want to stick around or if you want to go watch football, go watch football. If you want to stick around, I'll answer all your questions the best of my abilities. We do a Q&A, but that is it for the news. So get out of here. I appreciate it. Now let's jump into a little Q&A. Let me get rid of this band.